Since we tied the knot, my husband, a real mama's boy, never lifted a finger around the house. When I mentioned I was heading out on a business trip, he freaked out, saying, who's going to take care of me? After a big blow up, I left for my weekly trip. When I got back, there was a filled out divorce form in a note for me. It said, since you ditched the housework, I'm heading back to my folks. Check out the divorce papers and think things over. Reading this, my blood boiled. The nerve of him leaving a divorce threat. But then I started to cool off. After all, I had been thinking that maybe divorce wouldn't be the worst idea. Perhaps this was a sign. Heck, I'll just file them. And that's exactly what I did. The next morning, my husband burst in asking, hold on, where are the divorce papers? Oh, I filed them, I replied. What came next was my clueless husband making a scene, sobbing uncontrollably. I'm Kelly, 30 years old. I got married a year ago, and I'm a working housewife. After college, I worked hard at a big company before I realized I was nearing 30 with no boyfriend in sight. My folks were always on my case about settling down, so I grudgingly joined a dating agency. That's where I bumped into Ree, who later became my husband. Ree, a couple of years my junior, worked at a mixed firm. I was drawn to his soft-spoken nature, and after some dates, we got serious, thinking about the long haul. During our dating phase, he was the model boyfriend, always respecting my views. We never butted heads, so when he proposed to me, I joyfully said yes. We were officially engaged. Visiting my folks, they reminded us, marriage is for keeps, Kelly. Always be there for Ray. Ray, look after Kelly, okay? I acknowledged them, and Ray paid close attention. Then we dropped by Ray's folks. His dad, Drew, greeted me warmly. I've heard so much about you from my boy. It's great to finally meet you. His mom, Sally, poised yet reserved, questioned Ray. Is this the one? Yep, mommy, I want to marry her, he replied. I was a bit stunned. Did he just call her mommy? Seriously. I imagined someone younger, maybe a tad more girly. Even though I was older and had short hair, I was stunned she'd be so blunt. Drew stepped in, enough with the comments. I'm sorry, Kelly, Sally held her tongue. Drew pressed on, we're very happy about your marriage, but just know how Ray had a pretty easy living here. He might be a handful. Kelly, you sure about this? I've got my doubts. I adore Ray's soft side. I know we'll have each other's backs. I responded. He gave a nod and told Ray, starting a family's a big deal, son. Step up and keep her happy. All right, dad. Ray, looking dead serious, nodded. Our meetup with Rai's parents wrapped up, and soon after, we made our marriage official. We had a Loki wedding and began our journey as a married couple. My parents surprised us with a condo. As we settled into marital bliss, it hit me, Ray couldn't do any chores. One day, he set his alarm for seven but stayed knocked out. I was already doing laundry and making breakfast. No matter how much I tried waking him, he didn't budge. At last, after tossing his covers and giving him a shake, he stirred, whoa, it's 7.30 already. Why didn't you get me up? I did. Your alarm was flaring too. Now eat your breakfast, I replied. Wiping his eyes, he made his way to the dining table and began griping about the breakfast I made. Hey, Kelly, this egg's too runny. Is that a big deal? I can't eat it unless it's well done. Do it over. He blurted this out while I was in the middle of hanging laundry. Holding back my frustration, I retorted, then don't eat. Why would you say that? And this coffee is burning hot. Mammy always got the eggs and coffee spot on. All right, all right. I quickly redid the egg and chilled the coffee a bit. He happily wolfed it down but without even clearing his plate, made a beeline for the restroom, wait up. You know you should clean up after yourself, D. I'm short on time, he excused himself. Even though he made me remake his breakfast because he overslept, annoyed, I stopped doing my makeup to tackle the dishes. As I was picking out my outfit, 
He summoned me, Kelly, over here. What now? I've got to head out too. Help with my tie. I can't knot it. Standing there with a the tie just hanging, he looked helpless. Seriously, you can't even do a tie? What did you do before we married? I exhaled, knotted his tie, and somehow we both left the house. That's just how it was. He never pitched in with any housework. It felt like I was juggling everything, plus babysitting him every time something came up. It was always mommy did it this way or with mommy. It went like that, always referencing Sally. This routine stretched on for a year, and the pressure kept mounting. Thoughts of divorce snuck in now and then, but my dad's words about marriage being forever held me back. Out of the blue, due to a work hiccup, I was assigned a week-long business trip starting the next day. Breaking the news to my husband that evening, he, deeply into his video game, looked taken aback. Hold up, a business trip. A whole week. It's out of my hands. Work's calling, I responded. No way. Who's going to cover for you here for a week? He played on, clearly peeved. You'll have to step up. It's about time you got a grip on house stuff, I said. At that, he set down his game and locked eyes with me. Isn't the wife supposed to care for her husband and the house? Are you just bailing on that? Seriously, that's such old school thinking. We both have jobs. We should be a team. That's not how I see it. Mommy was always on top of things at home, but she was a stay-at-home mom. And honestly, it's kind of odd to hear an adult man always dropping the mommy card, pushing back, I retorted. What's your deal? Taking shots at me and my mommy. He sneered. I'm not, but let's be real, you're a mama's boy. Really, this is how you see me. I thought ups, but I had hit my limit. Face it, you're a mama's boy. You can't get up without help, can't even knot your own tie, and won't lift a finger around the house. And you're constantly stacking me up against your mom. For once, handle your own stuff. Really? You're going to come at me like that. That's why I was iffy about marrying someone older. Should have sided with mommy and chosen a younger, perkier girl. His words hit a nerve. And our chat spiraled into a major blowout, even joking. You shouldn't say stuff like that. We're married. If I had known you'd be this bossy and aloof, I'd have thought twice. Maybe splitting up is our best bet. I was taken aback by his sudden divorce talk. He went on sounding rather smug. You can't possibly get divorced, can you? You wouldn't want to be labeled divorced and think about what your dad said about sticking together. Don't just toss around the word divorce. Well, I just did. If you take off for this business trip and leave me here, I'm actually thinking about divorce. With that, he stormed into our bedroom, leaving me in shock. Even though the idea of divorce had been tough because I didn't want to let my parents down, now seemed like the time to give it real thought. With that on my mind, I went to sleep bright and early. The next day, I was up prepping for my trip. Our big blowout was still weighing on me, but there was work to be done. I nudged Ray, still under the covers, I'm heading out. You better wake up or you'll be late for work. His answer came out in a sleep muddled mumble. Rolling my eyes, I headed out. A few hours later, a text from him popped up. You barely tried to wake me. Now I'm running late. Did you really go on that trip? I quickly texted back, I did wake you up. And yes, I'm on my trip. I'll be back in a week. He read my message, but didn't bother replying. Nitrip, I called my parents to give them the lowdown on Ray's antics and mention I was leaning towards divorce. I braced for a lecture, but what they said caught me off guard. We had no clue he acted like this. Take your time thinking, but don't force yourself to stay. Always remember we're in your corner no matter what you decide. Their support choked me up. When I got back, Ree and I were due for a serious sit down. If he didn't shape up, divorce was on the horizon. Thoughts swirling, I returned after my week away. Walking in late, I noticed Ree wasn't home yet. As I scanned the room, a signed divorce document and a note caught my eye. The note read, since you ditched the housework, 
I'm heading back to my folks. Check out the divorce papers and think things over. Reading this, my blood boiled. The nerve of him leaving a divorce threat, but then I started to cool off. After all, I had been thinking that maybe divorce wouldn't be the worst idea. Perhaps this was a sign. Heck, I'll just fire them. And that's exactly what I did. When the papers went through, I felt like a ton of bricks had been lifted. That evening, I went to bed and had the best sleep. The next morning, sipping a relaxing cup of coffee, I heard the door. In walks Ray, Kelly, why didn't you come to my folks' place to apologize to me? What's gotten into you? He was steaming. Then, spotting the empty spot where the divorce papers had been, his eyes widened. Hold on. Where are the divorce papers? Oh, I filed them. I replied. You did what? He looked like he'd been slapped. You really went through with it. Thanks for signing them. Made everything smoother. You can't be serious. You actually went all the way. Have you lost your mind? Seeing how collected I was, he lost his cool. That's it. I'm calling my parents. Sure, knock yourself out. An hour later, Sally and Drew showed up at our place. Sally, spotting me right away, dramatically exclaimed, You, how could you just divorce re like that? What's your deal? I replied coolly, if he had the divorce papers all filled out and ready to go, doesn't that mean he wanted out? Is that an issue? How can you be so bold when you're just his wife? But Drew quickly cut her off with a firm enough. The room went still as Drew asked me, Kelly, can you walk us through what happened? I agreed and detailed his past antics, our spat right before I left, and the divorce papers he left behind. I was at my wits and it seemed like he wanted a divorce, so I went with it. He paused, mulling it over. Ray piped up, Mom, Dad, come on. Can't you see she's out of line? Tell her off. Sally jumped in, Oh, Ray, my poor baby, she's so hasty. You should reverse the divorce right now. There's no reversing. Our divorce is done and dusted. We're basically strangers now. Sally's face flushed and she tried to respond, but Drew stepped in again, zip it, Kelly. I apologize for Ray's behavior. Ray, eyes bulging, got an earful from his dad, you bonehead. I knew you had issues, but this is next level. Using divorce papers as a threat. Unbelievable. You had it coming, Re. Hold on, Sally tried to interject, but he kept going. It's partly on you, you spoiled him. Watch out. If you keep this up, I might divorce you next. Sally was taken aback, muttering, divorce. Drew pivoted back to me, looking very sorry. Kelly, I regret the trouble our clueless son caused you. Please move on and find joy. With that, Drew took off, practically dragging a whimpering Ray with him. Word got around that he severed ties with his own son. Ray ended up in a dingy apartment, living alone for the first time. His place was a disaster, and being habitually late got him booted from his job. Sally, always butting into Ray's affairs, was caught by her husband, and they genuinely split. Now she's living with Ray, hustling in the land jobs to get by. I don't see a turnaround for them in sight they are no longer my concern. As for me, I've got a condo to myself, and I'm focused on my career without Ray dragging me down. The place feels so much more open, and my job's going better than ever. I'm excited for whatever is next for me.